Hello everybody and welcome to another demo of NoSQL Map. Uh, today we're going to look at a demo where we use JavaScript injection to exploit a web application which has a MongoDB backend. Really JavaScript injection is one of the most dangerous features of NoSQL which if you don't sanitize your input properly can lead to some very very disastrous consequences for your application. So as you see I've got another web application I've written very similar to the last one. It's PHP again and it's a simple user search application and where we type in a username and we'll type in let's submit and it pulls our name or username and our email address for example okay easy enough so let's look at NoSQL map and see how we can interact with this application and exploit it in a little bit different way than we did in the last demo so as you see I've already got my NoSQL map started by typing NoSQL map.py at the command line I'll set my options. So let's set our target host. As you see, it's going to be 192, 168, 87, 140. Okay. Web app port is good again at 480. Set our URI path. And we'll copy again. We need to copy all the parameters in the page as well as the directory. Okay. Again, as I mentioned in the last demo, we only have GET requests implemented into SQL map right now, but at some point we'll be implementing post injection attacks as well. But for right now, we're good. We can move on back to the main menu. Okay, and then we'll choose option three for web app attacks. And again, first thing we do, we check, see how long of an HTTP response we get. And again, we'll use random characters to try to get a baseline. If we feed the application garbage, what does it give us back? So this time I'll take three characters just to be different. Okay, and we're going to inject H89 in. Once again, let's pull the parameters out of the URL. Let's use user search. Okay, that one seems interesting. And we run through a bunch of tests. So we inject a random string. We got a little bit shorter HTTP response back. So once again, a good sign that we might be able to do some injection. So look at the test this time though. We, we tried to inject the not equals injection like we did with the last test and we actually got the same length response back as if we just injected a random character. So obviously it didn't work. Now look what happens when we inject some arbitrary JavaScript and I'm going to run through this. Okay, we inject a variable, we close it off with an apostrophe, then we start injecting some JavaScript. Now it should be noted that this particular attack only works on NoSQL, or I'm sorry, MongoDB from the version 2.2 train. In version 2.4, the JavaScript interpreter switched from SpiderMonkey to V8, and the DB set of functions interacting with the uh, database this way was taken out. I have some new attacks in NoSQL map to deal with this later, but for right now, th these attacks are mainly for MongoDB 2.2 and, and before. Okay? But what we did, we said return db.thecollectionName.find, and this actually isn't the real collection name. One of the things I found was by doing this, we could inject an arbitrary collection name, <coughs> excuse me, using the PHP Mongo cl client, and it would still interact with the web application's current collection. And then we're going to use a dummy variable, so var dummy equals, and then we just stick some characters out there, because we assume, and I'll show you in the source code why this works here in a minute, that we were looking for a string and we're actually inserting this data where a string went. Okay, and we pass it in and we see we actually got 244 bytes variance from injecting the random parameter. So we think injection worked. We'll try this again with some other attacks. So what we'll do, you see these are a little bit different. We inject where we might be expecting an integer so we wouldn't be using the, the apostrophe to close off the condition. Okay, and we see nothing really works there. We actually got something smaller back. Um, and if you look at this and were to try to go to this URL, you would actually get an error. So if we get, if we inject something and we get something smaller back than when we injected a random parameter, then injection may have worked. Perhaps it's a login page and we actually got some new content back. But we have to be double, double check because we're not sure just simply based on observing the HTTP response length. Okay. We tried 
to return just one record. Because what if we have an application that is expecting to only get one record back, and we attempt this, which returns all the records in the collection? Okay, see if we get anything different there. Um, we didn't get anything there, injection did not work, and the same thing for integer. We actually got an error that time. So let's try the URL where it told us injection worked, which was actually, it was this one. So let's copy this, go back to our browser, open a new tab, paste it in. And as you see, it actually pulled all the records out of the database because what we did is we closed it off and we injected a return db dot an arbitrary collection name. This isn't actually the real collection name. The real collection name is called users and dot find, but the Mongo client PHP didn't seem to care. And then we used injected our dummy variable to close off the string. So to give you an idea of how this works, let me just show you the source code for this application real quick. Okay, we have a stored function inside the code in the application, just like old inline HTML and SQL. So we have a function, we have a query, we append our string from the user search box into the query, and then we're supposed to return this dot username equals our query. So whatever we plot the database. But what we do is we inject into the variable we go ahead and close off our variable there at the end of our statement and we return db dot the collection name which doesn't seem to really matter dot find okay and that's pretty much all there is to it uh, again this is an attack for mongo 2.2 it's not an attack for mongo 2.4 future releases of NoSQL map will include some mongo 2.4 attacks and that's it for now uh, head over to www.nosqlmap.net if you have any uh, questions, comments, all my contact info's there, and uh, would love for people to follow the project. Thanks for watching.